So the last time, the great 14-time Cup Series champion Henrik Motorsports flexed their muscles in NASCAR's Saturday show, it was all the way back in 2009. The organization, the clear team to beat after winning three consecutive championships with Jimmy Johnson, would enter the number 80 car for the season-opening Valentine's Day race for Tony Stewart, who would spread the love yet again to his competition with his fourth Daytona Nationwide Series win in the last five races. 1,886 days later in Road America in Wisconsin, Hendrick Motorsports will return to the series in which they've won multiple races and the 2003 championship with Brian Vickers. Shades of the championship car will be spotted on the car's livery, paying homage to the old GMAC scheme run during that historic season. And the entry's car number is also a temple, as it is number 17, paying homage not only to three-time Cup Series champion Darrell Waltrip, but also Ricky Hendrick, who ran this exact same paint job with this number in various Truck Series starts. This brand new number 17 team, which is going to be led by Kevin Mendering, the guy Jimmy Johnson fans know and love to death, will compete in three races this year, beginning with defending champion Kyle Larson this weekend, Alex Bowman at the Indianapolis Road Course, and William Byron tackling the challenging course in Watkins Glen. So I'm sure you guys are wondering, asking, why is this happening? Why now is Henrik Motorsports joining the NASCAR Xfinity Series? Many might say that this is merely HendrickCars.com playing checkers to checkmate more exposure to NASCAR fans, though the Hendrick Motorsports Xfinity move is mainly a move of chess caused by a variety of changes within the NASCAR circuit, which makes this the time to get involved. NRF Productions proudly presents why Hendrick Motorsports is returning to the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Before the 2008 season, Hendrick Motorsports they had an in-house team and they fielded it competitively for guys like Kyle Busch and Casey Mears who won some races for the organization. That all changed when Dale Earnhardt Jr. he made his big decision in 2007 to leave DEI and create a super team with Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson on the cup side for Hendrick. Rick Hendrick as a result would purchase a stake in the junior motorsports organization that Dale Earnhardt Jr. had run for the last few years and would outsource its resources to Junior's Mooresville, North Carolina operation. It's a partnership that has worked out quite well as it has tasted the sweet flavor of success and has developed current Hendrick Cup stars Chase Elliott and William Byron. This symbiotic relationship works, though the longevity of this has come into question in recent years as Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been asked a billion times, when are you moving up to Cup? And that has been asked more and more and more and more with all the wins and championships the organization has won. And also with the rise of the Dale Earnhardt Jr. download, we've seen Dale Earnhardt Jr. become more and more open to discussion on this topic. As before, it seemed like Dale Earnhardt Jr. was just content to stay in Xfinity. Now, hearing his conversations in Nashville, he has stated strong interest in moving up the ladder, a complete 180 from a couple years ago. I wish it was that easy. We want to go. We are working our tails off trying to exhaust every opportunity. We want to go cup racing. Junior Motorsports absolutely wants to be in the Cup Series. Now for the time being, you gotta pump the brakes on this because the Hendrick JRM partnership will remain tight-knit considering Dale Jr. is going to have to buy a charter. He's gonna have to raise a lot of money to sponsor a car. He's gonna have to negotiate to get the sponsors and he will also need to put in place sponsorships and OEM deal, etc. Long term, should Junior Motorsports go through the process and officially move up to the Cup Series, Hendrick would violate a NASCAR rule that states you cannot have an ownership stake in two different teams, meaning that Hendrick Motorsports and Junior Motorsports would have to go through a divorce. And JRM in this situation would likely keep most of the cars, equipment, and personnel HMS outsourced to the team in 2008. This loss would be devastating for a Hendrick Motorsports organization that has promoted several crew chiefs from JRM to its Cup program program, has its pit crew teams pit the four JRM cars, and of course has a pipeline full of prospects to race in the four entries in Cup. Although with the current crop of drivers, this is something that Rick Hendrick does not need to stress about. The other point, that could be a big blow to the organization and the overall depth to have guys in the pipeline that are also good just in case something happens to the crew chiefs, they decide to retire, they decide to move on. It's important to have options outside of within the Cup Series team. On top of that, you got to keep in mind, this is the inaugural season of the new NASCAR, at least for the Premier Series. 
no longer are cars homemade as they're all pre-bought from Walmart to be microwaved and prepped by the teams and drivers. This not only has the fab shop twiddling their thumbs because there's nothing for them to do, but it also takes away one of the techniques that made Henrik Motorsports so dominant. Under Ray Everham, this was the same team that fielded the T-Rex car in the 1997 All-Star Race. A car so radical in design, NASCAR told the 24 team after the race, yeah, this car is too good, do not bring it back. And did that banned car from NASCAR intimidate them? Absolutely not, because throughout the 2000s you had Cheat and Chad, as they called him, skimming the gray area almost every single week with near perfection along the likes of Kevin Harvick with a white line at the old Atlanta. So that technique is no longer being practiced, and the main problem with that is Henrik Motorsports is the NASCAR Cup Series and the NASCAR Cup Series only. And that is something that Chad Canales pointed out earlier in the offseason as a potential vulnerability for the organization in this brand new era. It's really eye-opening. We have a very narrow focus at Hendrick Motorsports. We don't mess with Xfinity. We don't mess with trucks, and it's served us well. But it has left us, in my mind, a little vulnerable going into the 2022 season with the car because everybody else that we are racing against has some type of tie to other racing. Chad now sees the traditional HMS norm of refraining from the lower division as something that could hurt the longevity of their dominance. Running Xfinity means that you can still be extra creative with chassis and race setups considering that Xfinity they still allow you to run chassis, they still allow you to build the cars from scratch, allowing them to push that gray area that might help them learn a method or two that they can use in the Cup Series. Plus it keeps food on the table for the Fab Shop employees. But why the NASCAR Xfinity Series? After all, there are other avenues such as the Truck Series that are much cheaper, cost-friendly alternatives for this HMS team. This point right here is the reason why they're doing Xfinity over trucks, as the NASCAR Xfinity Series is what I call the Dead End Series. In Cup this year, you just look at it, the usual suspects, they are still on top, but we've also seen Trackhouse, Petty GMS, 2311 Racing, heck, even Front Row Motorsports with Michael McDowell contend and even win races. The Truck Series is still dominated by Thor Sport and Cowl Bush Motorsports, the two legacy teams in the series. But then again, you got Nice Motorsports and David Gill on racing. They have also won multiple races this season. These are all truck teams that started up in the past few years. Xfinity? Yeah, you have Colleague Racing, but Matt Colleague's organization, funded by his Leap Protection Service, is the exception to the stagnated mid-pack teams that have started up, you know, in the past couple years that have not been able to build any momentum, really. Every single year, I delude myself into saying, this is finally going to be the year. Guys, we are going to see some of the smaller teams emerge, and then every single year, these little guys get clobbered. JD Motorsports, Jeremy Clements Racing, Brandon Blitt, and Ryan Sieg Racing are all still mid-pack teams. They are not contenders for victories. Okay, yeah, you have SS Greenlight and Big Machine Racing, but they could only win those races with cup drivers and with help from cup-level teams in terms of an alliance. There are no team success stories in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. More than cup and trucks, you need the money, you need the alliances, and in some cases you need the cup level talent to even compete against the likes of Joe Gibbs Racing and Junior Motorsports and beat them. Now even then, with all these teams still coming up short, you look at some of the teams that have rolled back their commitments to NASCAR's Saturday show in recent years. Team Penske, one of the most dominant teams in Xfinity after Austin Cindric received his diploma and graduated to the NASCAR Cup Series, decided to head out. Strudas Racing scaled back to just the 98 car last year and has been a disaster ever since. Joe Gibbs Racing, while one of the powerhouses, scaled back this offseason to a three-car operation. So you have a lot of the bigger teams scaling back their involvement in the series, and you have the mid-pack team still running mid-pack. So who's filling the void here? And that is the powerhouse organizations at the Golden Bowtie. Chevrolet has licked their chops at seeing their competition get weaker and weaker by making their powerhouse teams much stronger and more dominant than ever before. Junior Motorsports is still a four-car powerhouse team and even debated adding a fifth full-time car had Michael Annette chose to keep racing. And you look at how dominant they've been over the last couple months. They've won six races this season, which leads all organizations. Richard Childress Racing resurrected its 21 car for Austin Hill to become a two-car organization once again. Colleague Racing, one of the rare success stories in that series, they have all three of their drivers in a playoff spot and they have won two races with AJ Allmendinger. This is a manufacturer that has won 10 of the last 15 Xfinity races and has not lost a race. The last time Chevrolet lost an Xfinity race, you have to go all the way back to Martinsville in April when Brandon Jones stole that victory. 
Chevrolet in the NASCAR Xfinity Series is just too good right now. And this sets up perfectly as yet another opportunity for Hendricks, excuse me, Hendrick, to find new ways to own the competition. Honestly, when we're talking about Hendrick Motorsports, there is no debate as to whether Hendrick Motorsports will succeed in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. With the organization's technology, personnel, and pit crew depth, they'll instantly trump the small Xfinity teams that have been trying to build their program up for the last decade. They're also going to have the big money necessary because you look at HendrickCars.com, you look at the sponsorship that they put up in the last couple of years. Not only with Kyle Larson in the Cup Series, but you know they've also expanded with Spire Motorsports and now they're sponsoring these select races with the Xfinity team. And that means that they're going to have the money necessary to become a top-notch team instantly. That right there is going to allow the Hendrick Motorsports team to spread like wildfire in the next couple years. As given that and the talent behind the wheel, Hendrick will likely win one of their three races this year. They are going to learn a lot about how the Xfinity series runs and operates in these races. Maybe next year is the year they decide to run some intermediate, short tracks, and super speedways to build a notebook for perhaps a 2024 full-time launch. Or, given the adaptability of this organization, how they've risen to the top in key situations, maybe they just go all in in 2023. I think within the next five years, you are going to see Henrik Motorsports full-time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, whether that's in 2023, 2024, or whenever Junior Motorsports and Henrik Motorsports divorce, that is still up for debate. However, I think whenever they decide to make that move, I think it is likely you are going to see that car be a rotation with Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, William Byron, and Alex Bowman all maxing out their five Xfinity starts of the season, and they will race in every single regular season race that isn't a super speedway, standalone race, or a dash for cash event. And in that way, that is going to help build their program a lot, as they're going to have the Cup Series talent out there, giving the crew chief for this car some heavy information to really put them ahead of the curve and be a dominant powerhouse for years to come. Now as for the remaining 13 races, in all likelihood they are going to turn to a guy in the Chevrolet pipeline like potentially Jack Wood if he can develop, or maybe they can hire a reserve driver like we see with Stuart Haas Racing. They did this with Ryan Priest this year and it could work for Henrik Motorsports to just get some more depth within the organization. So should the 17 car run full time, it is going to be a nightmare for the NASCAR Xfinity Series and it is going to bring back the idea of leeching because Hendrick Motorsports, they're going to put their four drivers in there and I highly doubt they're going to get just one driver, one prospect because then in that situation, they're developing a driver that they're potentially not going to have room for on the cup program unless we see NASCAR ease up restrictions on the four team rule, which then maybe they do decide to run a regular in that car. Either way, this program is instantly going to become a powerhouse. They have the talent, they have the guys in the shop, and they will have the OEM support from Chevrolet. Hendrick Motorsports racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this weekend is much more than just a three-race stint. It's going to build them an opportunity to dominate the NASCAR Xfinity Series for decades to come. So anyways, this is Nathan for NRF Productions signing out, and just remember guys and gals, life's a beach and then you drive. <laughs>